Hi, this is Mr. Cordes, and today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to piece together our writing for the Scarlet Ibis essay. Um, we're going to specifically look at the intro paragraph and our thesis statement. Okay, you have this document which we have pulled apart all of the symbols of the birds, discovered what they mean, connected it with the theme of our story. Um, you guys have also gone through and have written out your body paragraphs. So you have one paragraph about the scarlet ibis, okay, that is required. Um, you also have another paragraph about a different bird that you picked. So your options for that one, ladies and gentlemen, was to either select the owl, the cardinal, or the peacock. So you're writing about two birds. One of them is uh, the scarlet ibis, and the other one is the bird of your choice, owl, cardinal, or peacock. Um, and we have pieced those together. Um, but today, our goal, ladies and gentlemen, is to write out our intro paragraph. So you have this document in front of you. And one of the things that you will notice is that it has an additional sentence at the beginning. So normally, paragraphs will have at least five sentences and they guide us into our thesis statement, the point that we're trying to prove, okay? And so it goes very general, and then it kind of narrows in and you hit home with that thesis statement and you begin to talk about what you wanna talk about. Um, we have only done thus far, kind of move things around here. Um, we have only done the third sentence, the fourth sentence, and the fifth sentence, okay? We did that for Of Mice and Men, we did that for um, uh, The Necklace, Looking at the scarlet ibis, we're kind of we're we're expanding our skills. Okay, understanding the symbols and how it connects to the theme was a big thing for our body paragraphs. Now we're going to translate that over to our intro. So you will see this sentence first, but of course we don't do anything logical. We're going to do things a little bit backwards. Okay, so the very first thing is you need to craft a sentence with um, the author and the title. So you have the scarlet ibis. Okay. You have the Scarlet Ibis, and you also have uh, our author, his name is James Hurst, okay? And you need to piece that together into a story. You can't really say the Scarlet Ibis is about the Scarlet Ibis because that's kind of like Curly's wife is Curly's wife. The Scarlet Ibis by James Hurst is a story of, and you kind of give a, a, a detail, two, brother, two siblings, two brothers living life together, um, overcoming uh, obstacles, overcoming handicaps, right? You kind of want to give us a, a small introduction so that it clues readers into what the story is about, okay? So that's your very first one, ladies and gentlemen. Can you please take a moment and mark in your author and title? Start here, because that's the easiest, okay? The second one is to introduce your characters, and you've got two characters. You have the narrator, Okay, and then you also have Doodle. So here your goal is to introduce them. I would suggest do it in, in the same sentence, not make two. Who is the narrator? The narrator is the person telling the story about his brother Doodle, okay? Doodle is a handicapped boy who's taken care of by his brother, comma, the narrator, right? Because the narrator does not have a name, it, it will sound a little bit more difficult, but you just need to introduce who they are, right? Mr. Cordes is my English teacher. Gives us just enough information that you know and have a point of reference, all right? So the narrator, who is the narrator? The narrator tells the story of his time with his brother Doodle, okay? Something that kind of clues us into these, these are the characters that we are referencing to, all right? So take a moment, pause, go ahead and get sentence number three, go ahead and get sentence number four. And now that we've come back, um, we're gonna go on to our thesis statement. That's the point we're trying to prove. Now you're gonna need to construct this together because it's contingent on what you're writing about. So just like when you wrote about um, of mice and men and the necklace, and you kind of picked different words and put them into a sentence, that's gonna be the same thing here. And you have to remember back to this chart because certain things are gonna come into play. Theme words are gonna come into play, how it connects to our characters, the emotions that are being projected. So a lot of this chart is going to come across with this sentence, the point you're trying to prove. So the point I'm trying to prove here is, um, the bird represents, illustrates, demonstrates, shows, 
Okay. The, and then you talk about the theme in which it's representing. So let me use an example because no one's using the Oriole. I would say the Oriole bird, um, and I'm going to pick one of my verbs, illustrates, demonstrates, or shows. Okay, so I'm going to pick one of those words. The theme of blank through the characters of through the actually through the character of oh through doodle's character okay so let's say i'm going to go back over here to my chart um some of the things it talks about how it was foreshadowing death the idea of starting over new beginnings or remembrance so if you need to use multiple ones that's fine so the oriole bird i'm going to use the word illustrates i'm going to highlight that one because I like that. The Oriole bird illustrates the theme of um, new beginnings. Okay, whoops, new beginnings through Doodle's character. Now, because you are writing about also the Scarlet Ibis and you've got a different bird, you kind of need to piece them together. So you may act, it may be two sentences at, at the starting and then we'll combine them together. Okay. But our goal right now is to make sure that they that we have all the information. So the blank bird, and then you're going to pick your verbs, illustrates, demonstrates, shows, whichever. The theme of blank, and then through uh, the relationship of, of the two brothers, through the events that happen to Doodle, through the experience of um, having 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 handicaps. Okay, so if you need to make two sentences right now, you can do that. If you've picked like the owl and the scarlet ibis, and both are referencing death, you could probably say the scarlet ibis and owl birds illustrate the theme of death through Doodle's interactions. Like you can kind of combine them, right? Um, the idea of even the Scarlet Ibis being an outcast and the peacock being Doodle's desire to be perfect could coincide. So the peacock and the Scarlet Ibis demonstrate Doodle the theme of uh, being an outcast and wanting to be accepted by Doodle, right? Or through Doodle's experience. So switch these around. This is a little bit more complicated because you're taking two different things as well as the other and meshing them all together. Um, I would actually recommend uh, if you want to craft out the sentence, send it over to me in a chat or in a message, and we'll be able to kind of fine tune it. All right. But at this point, fill in the blanks. The blank bird or birds, pick one of your verbs. Okay. Pick one of these illustrates, demonstrates, or shows. The theme of blank through, through what? Through Doodle's interactions, through the siblings, through the narrator's pride. How does that work? Okay. So pause, let's put get our thesis down. And at this point, you now have three sentences, okay, or four. I would really prefer for the thesis to be one sentence so we can combine those together. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is, is the biggest part. This is a general sentence regarding your topic. Now, you're not talking about Doodle and you're not talking about the narrator, okay? You are in referencing to the birds and how they are symbols, but you are making a general sentence right now about how symbols help convey um, a message or theme. That's what you're doing. You're giving me a general statement about how symbols help convey a message or theme. That could be your sentence if you wanted it to be. It's a little bland, but that's what you're doing. Okay? So symbols in literature help articulate a message that's being said by the author, right? Um, in every story, there is a symbol that represents a bigger idea than itself, okay? You are finding a way to introduce that concept. You can introduce the themes you wanna talk about. What does it mean to be an outcast? What does it mean to um, have death constantly looming around you? Okay, what are those bigger themes? And, and you could explain that. The desire to be perfect haunts people 
in their, you know, uh, haunts them if they are handicapped or seen as less than. Okay. So your goal right here is to craft a sentence that introduces that. You're not going to reference doodle. Okay. Um, no reference to doodle. Whoops. Capitalize doodle because he's a pronoun. Um, or a proper name. No reference to Doodle or the narrator, okay, or the Scarlet Ibis bird or any. You're not even not even worried about the birds, okay. So you're going to craft a sentence that introduces how symbols convey some sort of theme or message or idea, okay. So you'll notice that there is a number two sentence, and by the time we get to our next writing or the writing after that, you will be going for five strong sentences in your introduction, okay? Um, we, we guide into these because they're a little bit more abstract, but now this is your, what, third, fourth writing. We should be able to craft a general sentence that helps guide us in to what's going on, okay? Um, that's that's the that's the key ticket to right you you guide someone in to where they need to be okay so take a moment you're gonna have four sentences again if you have two sentences down here for your thesis let's combine them into one if you want to send me your thesis in the chat or in a message i'll take a look at it and we can piece it all together but our goal right now ladies and gentlemen is to make sure that we have all of these constructed once you have all of these constructed um, you're uh, eventually going to remove them from the boxes, right? Put them in normal paragraph form. Um, you're going to remove all of these sentences from these uh, tables and put them in normal paragraph form, okay? So you've got these sentences that come first, then your body paragraphs. We're not worried about a conclusion because I want analysis rather than uh, reflective summary at the end. I want I want analysis. That's our biggest thing for you guys going into 10th grade is making sure that you have quality analysis of literature. Okay. Message me if you have any questions or concerns. Get started on those sentences. I will talk to you guys soon.